Hello, it's Joe Valick, and today I'm here to do something I said I would never do. Something a lot of you have been asking me to do for a very, very long time. It is launch a podcast. Yes, a very exciting, very new project is coming right now. I had this idea about a year ago and I sat on it. I bought all the equipment. I sat on it for a long time uh, for no real reason at all. And I finally decided it's time to shift my butt into gear and get it popping. So the Cotched podcast is here at last. What an exciting moment indeed. If you don't know what Cotched means, it means uh, to be relaxed, to be cozy, to be comfy. Uh, you might use it in the sentence like, are you coming out tonight? Nah, bro, I'm Cotched. I've called it that because we're in my cozy little room. We're going to have a great time. We're going to chill. Uh, we're going to get comfy. We're going to have a laugh. Um, so why am I doing this? Well, I want to prove that I can do more than just my Nardwa style deep dive stuff. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love those and they are not going anywhere. They will still exist. Um, but I just thought I want to show that I can have different kinds of conversations with people, long form, interesting, funny, allow people to talk a little bit more about themselves, share stories, um, perhaps talk more deeply about things that I don't usually give them the opportunity to talk about in my usual interviews. And alongside that, it's fun. It's a new project. And why not? You know, I thought, why not? So our first guest is Paris Eves. He's a close friend of mine. And I wanted to do it with him, first of all, because I trust him. I know him. And I thought we would just have a really good, funny conversation. So get comfy, uh, subscribe and like. Uh, let me know what you think about this as well. I really want to get your opinions of how we can improve this, especially in the early stages. Yeah, enjoy. Thank you! You get a lot of ass. <laughs> Do you get ass? I get asked that question a lot. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Next question. Next question. Um, well, there's no questions. Uh, oh, is there not? Oh, slightly shit. different. I have oh. I, I mean, oh. part, of, part of wanting to do this... Um, oh, no. ...is... Because I want to be, I want to do something a bit less serious, a bit less intense, a bit more relaxed, yeah. you know, uh, where we're just chatting and I've got some topics of discussion. So first topic of discussion. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. But <laughs> oh God. welcome back to Bristol. Oh, thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Oh, so good to be home. Where so, did you go? I went, to, bro, I went to London for six months, mate. I went to London. I was living in a good old place called, uh, called Whitechapel, you know, um, Anyone that knows Whitechapel? Uh, yeah, it's just... I point. visited. Yes, you did visit me in my humble abode, actually, to oh, be no, fair. No, no. We're not giving out free advertising today. Yeah, this is product placement. <laughs> Absolute cocktails. We're sponsored, guys. Come on. Sign the contract. So, Whitechapel. Yeah, man. I was there for six months. I um, I moved in January, uh, then moved back to Bristol at the end. I was supposed to... I mean... Oh, the plan was to stay to, in London for the foreseeable uh, future for like the rest of my my fucking musy little musy little life, basically. But uh, it just all went a bit south, I'm afraid. Mm. And now you're back. I'm indeed for the best. I must admit, man. I uh, I missed Bristol with my heart, loins, and soul. Mm. So uh, you know, it's no place like home, as they say, man. And uh, I learned a lot because I never moved away from home before. As you know, I always was a. Uh, was a Bristol boy. I was a Bristol boy through and through. Like you know what I mean. Like I never moved away from homes and that. I loves. I I loves it here. I does. Yeah. And you're happy to be home. I'm fucking. I'm well elsewhere. Man, I'm fucking. A, I'm fucking over the moon, mate. You know. I'm fucking over the moon. Do you want a grape, bruv? I'll take a grape. Give oh, me okay. one grape. But Bristol's happy to have you back. I feel Thank like you. I feel like um. You gotta pick this you, stem off of it. Thank you. That's fine. You and Johnny Darko left at the same time. I know. And the so <laughs> Bristol's might as goons. The city wasn't the same, you know, and you're both back now mm. and um, everyone's happier for it, I think. Oh, thank you. Well, I hope so. I mean, I miss this place, man. So um, it's nice to see that I was missed a little bit, but, um, but, you know, even if I wasn't, I'd still be very happy to come back here. But yeah, it was funny because Darko would like move the same time as me as well. 
and we've decided to come back at the same time. Obviously, very unplanned and very different parts of the uh, yeah. the world where we both ended up. Yeah, I he guess. was in the other in another flipping hemisphere. Bro was on a different planet. It looked like from his uh, <laughs> from his Instagram at point. I was like, bloody hell, mate! The, the, he is where Lord of the Rings is, I guess, as well. Which yeah, is, for uh, sure. Middle Earth. Yeah. So uh, yeah, crazy. But um, yeah, mate, I, I'm just so happy to be back home, man. I, like, I'm, I think one of the main reasons I moved back, man, was because I miss my family mm. and my friends. And one thing, I, not even you know, two shit on London. To, to London's discredit, right? It is it, very hard to make friends in London. I felt. really, I f- yeah. I heard it's it's not. I don't know. Maybe I'm just people. maybe I'm just like an un- maybe I'm just a very unlikable person. Then I guess. Or maybe it's a good place to go <laughs> if you already have friends there. Yeah, that was the thing. I really didn't, man. I just kind of went on a whim. Like I knew people, but they're not like me and Bro Valik. Like we're not like. Well, well, some of them are closer than others. Obviously, that's just how friendship goes in it. But like, I feel. I wasn't like, oh, fuck it. Do you want to go get Nando's kind of vibe? Like yeah. on an impulsive one, innit? <laughs> really? So, uh, yeah, I what, like your laugh. Have you got any <laughs> any funny stories from London? Oh, God. Oh, God. I can't. I have a few, but I'm not allowed. Like I'm appropriate not, funny like, stories. No, I, I feel like I'm not at liberty to say, in it. Right, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm not at liberty to say. They're good stories, but I just feel like I'd be incriminating. Right. Which For sounds quite... For you? For other people? For everyone, I guess, isn't it? You as well. Mm. Everyone included, everyone involved in my life. You're going down with me. Nah, bro. Funny, funny stories. I don't think so, no. Nothing funny happened. No, just serious stuff. It was just so serious. It was just <laughs> just mewing. Yeah, but not even lo- locked in kind of serious. Just nah, like it was stuff. It was just like survival serious, mm. you know? Yeah, was was your fight or flight on constantly? Yeah, a lot of the time, especially with my living situation. Mm. But, um but now you're back. I am back. A lot safer now. Mentally in the right place. Looking to get my my uh, my business and affairs together, man. I've not really feel like I've been out the music a little bit too long. Even though it's only been about two or three months since I dropped a single, I just feel like that's too long for me. And I've not really had anything to say, which has been nice. And then kind of like been looking at the Paris, like my brand, or what I've created, what I've created basically with music and stuff, and just having a little of a deep dive into it. And obviously, I've had a lot of turbulent life changes, like moving back. It's been really stressful going from jobs to jobs and stuff like that, figuring out where my money's coming in. Like I've had a lot of uncertainty and like even like more personal stuff, which I'm not really trying to go into too much, but um, that's happened as well. So I'm just trying to like, um, yeah, just readjust, man, and just find my feet again, really. I just feel like in a way, like I, uh, I've, I've moved house about, I've been, I lived in three different houses so far this year already. And it's wow. like, half, well, August, well, August, that's just okay, I guess, but it's more than average, I guess. But, um, but yeah, so I'm just quite excited just to, s- find my feet mm. and just see what I can do with like a good foundation, my friends and my people. And I know where everything is in Bristol and I feel like that's what I miss the most. That's mm. why I come back. So yeah. yeah. Getting your money up. I'm a funny baby. You know, I'm a very, <laughs> like, a very I've, my sense of humor has wavered the last few months, bro. I feel like I've just not been as funny. So I just feel like I need to like lock in and just kind of like, you know, yeah. get my money and my funny up and then, you know, Mm. go from there son I feel that I feel that that's mm. kind of another reason why I wanted to, to do this podcast as well is um, I feel like I, I, I'm funny but I'm not that funny a lot oh. of the time I feel like I don't have much opportunity to be funny these days you know it's people and don't bring it out of you bro yeah for sure and that's why I thought well, this this is a good opportunity for to have a laugh in a chilled environment have a chin wag um, and talk about all sorts of things yeah, bro. such as your business idea Oh shit! Are you able to sh- share anything about no, that? I'm, yet? Actually, I'm actually not allowed to share it. <laughs> um, yeah, basically, what can you say? I'm working on something that's going to go quite hand in hand with the music, mm. especially what I'm planning to do musically. Because I'm planning on switching up the, I plan on switching up the sound basically a little bit. Well, not I say semi majorly. Mm. What would you say? Because you've heard some of the stuff. I think uh, it's just maturing. I think mm-hmm. maturing your sound is you. You've been in music a bit longer than you know than you have been in the past, as as is the yeah. way of things. Um, yeah, logically. Um, so I think you're getting better at production. You're understanding your abilities more. Um, yeah. You're believing in in your abilities more thank as you. well. So you're trying different things. I think is a good way to put it. Yeah, man. Well, thank you. That was very nice. But. Um, yeah, I'm just evolving my sound, man, and I feel like I've wanted to create something to kind of go alongside it, so my my music has more more of a world to exist within, mm. basically. Um, but obviously, I'm not. I don't want to share too much of what I'm working on at the moment, but I guess I'm. It's kind of like cowboy ish. 
Yeah. I guess like, I'm turning into a bit of a cowboy. It yeah. seems, which is really nice, because I love cowboys. So, are you a cowboy yourself? I understand. I've been described as one by a lot of people actually. Cowboy also, builder. Cowboy builder. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, cowboy builder. I think it was like a it's a TV show that it used to be on, and it was like. Oh, yeah. I think his name was Dom Dom Littlewood. Do you know that guy? He was oh, uh, the bold the... guy. He's a bit like a shorter version of um, Ross Kemp. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. also the situations he's in are way more like <laughs> tame. But he reacts in the same way. So he's uh, <laughs> he's in a house and a builder comes in. And he's like, oh, three hundred quid to change your um, change your lock on this door. Quid. And then Dom Littlewood busts out and he's like, "You're a cowboy builder. You're <laughs> a bastard." Me. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Bro, that's what I'm gonna do, man. Cowboy building, man. About to scam people out here, bro. <laughs> Extortionate amount of money for, to me to fix the locks on the houses, bro. No, we do. That's my business idea. To be yeah. fair, three hundred quid for a lock is quite reasonable, mate, I think. We do three, four of those a month, mate. That's my rent sorted. Yeah, true. If you get just four unfortunate people. Did I tell you about the time I was um, I was in a TV show where I was basically doing that? No. I w- <laughs> You're on TV. Yeah, I was what? in uh, in a in a foreign land. I was I was um, I was commandeered to be an actor. In was a- this Wales? No, this this was um, this was somewhere else. And it was a, I was like an actor in the TV show. The TV show was called um, what was it called? Fair and Square, I think. And right. basically, I was I had to call some plumbers. Mm and two plumbers and they the crew would come in and they'd create a really simple problem like they would b- break something under the sink mm-hmm. um like just the the seal and the plumbers had to give us a quote yeah. it's something simple it should be like easy or even free you know for just a call out fee for them to fix that yeah and uh, the idea is we're testing if they're fair and square mm. or if they're scammers um so the first guy came and he charged us like 180 quid for for, for it and um then yeah there's this funny moment when you know the film crew like six people come out of a tiny room Mm -hmm. and this plumber looks at me and i'm like (laughs) i don't know they're paying me (laughs) uh, and i just slink off into the back like as if you just um, my apologies sir irreparable damages and they're like what the hell is going on and i'm like you're yeah they're like you're not fair and square why is that this anyway but the second guy was good. He was good. Yeah, so he was he was nice and he was yeah. like, I'm not even gonna charge you for this. Like oh. this is amazing. Um, you know, it's so simple. Don't need to charge you. I'm just a good guy. Um and then the crew <laughs> came out and they were like, You're a good guy and they gave him a fucking medal. <laughs> Uh, this b- bemused what? gentleman in the in a participation kitchen. medal. Yeah, it's like well done. We won't give you any money here or compensation for for sure for anything. But here's a medal, bro. Have you have you been on TV? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I have, yeah, a long time ago though. I was interviewed on TV, like local news. <laughs> so nice, <I>, yeah. <laughs> what about? <laughs> that sounds so sus. <laughs> yeah, mate, nothing good, bro. No, no, I was. I am um, back in my. Um, oh, I'm getting on a little bit now. I'm like 300 now. But um, yeah, I I used to be very into my film stuff, and I used to make films, as everyone knows. So like, you can't find them anymore, sadly. But um, well. That I say sadly as if that wasn't any of my doing, like purposely <laughs> deleting my own work off of YouTube, I guess. But yeah, I used to make films and one of them quite, got quite a lot of attraction, actually. And I managed to get interviewed on a, on TV for it, which was pretty fun. It was live as well. And I'd... Wow. Yeah, I would say like my... I would like to say my life changed after it, but it really didn't. Like, <laughs> I just kind of went back to my job and like, yeah. No one cared. Nah, I was 17 though. So um, yeah, it was it was great. It was like... More attention I was ever used to at that point, you know. So it was. Uh, was this was this Red Room? Nah, this was like uh, it's a film else. called Belief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like this is like a film I made a long time ago. Now, obviously, this was like in my, when I was in college. Yeah, back in college. Yeah, it was good though. Like, that was when I was on TV, and that was like really daunting. But man, I loved it. It was so good. Like, yeah. well, one day again, they'll put me back on. They'll make that mistake, and they'll uh, throw me back on there, and it that'd be crazy. Yeah, I can't imagine you as. Uh, like on the news imagine you like if they put you on the news they, have, like, you, have you seen this man? live tv paris eve's live tv bro it would like, be like paris eve's like best comp like best moments competition <laughs> bro be like and it'd just be all moments of me on live tv just saying shit man have you I seen the clip of that guy who um they got him mixed up um <laughs> <laughs> he was thought he was going for a job interview for a, for, for a cleaner <laughs> he ends up on the news talking about <laughs> that is the only way i'm ed- ever end up on live tv again bro <laughs> If I accidentally <laughs> stumble into the studio and I'm just start like, yeah, bro. That's it. That's like 20 years ago. Like yeah. you say, time is f- flying, man. It is. Like it's 2024. 
How old are you, if I can ask? I'm 24. You're 24? Thousand years, yeah. Twenty four thousand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Twenty. I'm twenty four years of age, bro. It's quite exciting, isn't it? I love being older, man. I personally, right? Everyone's sort of like, I pity the youth in a way. Mm. I pity them. And do you know why? Because I feel like, let me put my grape down for this one, right? So I, I feel like I love being older. The reason being because when I get older, right, I feel sexier, mm. I feel wiser. And me being wiser, more confident in my knowledge and what I know, yeah, just makes me feel sex as a human being. And I feel that just attracts more positive things into my life. The fact is I feel more mentally aware and well of myself and healthier, basically. That just creates like a physical attractiveness about myself that I, I have a lot of admiration for. Like I have a lot of self-love for myself. Mm. And I think, you know, it kind of shows with my, my work and how I how I feel about myself, really, what I say about myself. But, but I really do. And I, I feel like the way I say I pity youth, maybe I don't pity them because pity is like a quite a strong negative word, but I don't envy being younger than I was. And I know a lot of people do that because they want to recapture some like long lost youth. But I feel like being older is just fun and it's just nice to be more knowledgeable and wiser. Mm. Uh, and I just, yeah, and I, and I like older women as well. And it's just sort of like, yeah, bro, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, no, I'm joking. well, I'm not joking, but I, I yeah, ish. But, um, but yeah, um, yes, bro. Um, but I feel like, yeah, there's nothing wrong about like getting older. I think definitely. Mm. It's good. So much more. It's weird. So much more freedom, but it feels like in a lot of ways, so much less freedom. I, I don't know. It depends how you curate. Live your life. I feel like your life's become more curated in a way. Like you, because mm. I feel like a lot of the times when you, because I have a theory, all right, is that tell me what happened between the age of one, zero when you were born to the age of nine. Tell me anything important that you learned something from. I broke my arm. Okay. I learned from that. That hurt. I learned yeah. not to jump off things. and. Uh... But like very fundamentally human things, right? I have a theory, right, about myself and about people, yeah? Like, especially like people that are in like, the mid-20s, which I'm now getting into that point, yeah? I feel like you're not actually 24. You're actually 15. Mm. Because the first eight to nine years don't really count because you're learning very fundamentally human things, like how to walk, how to talk, how to mm. communicate, how to be polite those kind of things really very very fundamental thing things right then i think after that period you get to a period right where you gain more consciousness suddenly and i guess <laughs> yeah. yeah that moment when you're 13 and gain consciousness for the first time do you but remember gaining consciousness i think i was a very aware pe person bro yeah very aware you know from day one day zero baby in the room bro i remember <laughs> it was warm in there you know what I mean? no fuck's sake but um yeah so i have a theory like we're actually like mentally well we're like nine to ten years younger than we we actually are interesting yeah that kind of makes sense i think so i don't know if i remember gaining consciousness but i remember <laughs> in school we used to sit on a bench and we'd have like philosophical ph philosophical conversations like this one without realizing what philosophy was mm. you know i'd be like we, we i always remember we would fixate on um colors yeah the, the concept um of how do you know that people see the same colors as you? You know, it's a great conversation. We've all had it, but we were, yeah. we were having this in like, year, you know, year it's quite deep four shit, or five. Yeah. We're sitting on a bench and I remember specifically saying what we were like having this conversation. How do you know you see red and green and blue the same as me? Yeah. So I was like, right, there's one way to settle this. Fight. What colors <laughs> this red bench? Oh. And uh, then I was like, wait, I've given the answer away there. But yeah i think around that time was when i started like being yeah. aware of what was going on yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, the possibilities that we had in ourselves yeah just the free will basically mm -hmm. that moment when you find out you have free will mm. good moment man good times i love my free will yeah. i love i literally love my free will yeah oh my god yeah what's your favorite thing to do with my free will i love going to the cinema by myself i love going for cycle rides i love going to the spa i love i've just signed up for boxing again i've actually become a bit of a health nut recently to mm. be honest which is like I'm not saying it's new for me because I've always been on it but I feel like being in London yeah you just like that's what I'm saying it's absence makes the heart weary as they say right and I feel like I've been absently I've been because I've been pushed into more of like a survival mindset because I was up in London my expenses were doubled everything mm -hmm. was more expensive like and I didn't really know when I felt isolated, so I really had to make myself busy. It's, I've been like pure survival mode up there. Right now, since and I've like, neglected and avoided like certain aspects of my life, like my health and like even cooking, cooking healthier, being creative, having a social life. Things I've neglected. Now I've come back in. I've just got like a deeper appreciation for all of it. So I feel mm. like I'm low key. Feel like at the moment, like I'm rebuilding my old life in a way, but like with like new tools. Mm. If I was to describe where I'm at right now mentally in my life. But um, but yeah, I forgot what the question was. But yeah, 
I don't know. There was a question. Uh, so, uh, what's your favorite thing to do with free will? Oh, bro, I was just going on one. Yeah, that kind of stuff, really. Yeah, I love to cycle, man. I think I mentioned that, and um, it's very freeing. Yeah, I feel like I love. Um, I've been also getting into it um, mm. a lot recently, and you were just complimenting my awesome bike. But I, when yeah, I, when sick. you're out there on the road sick or on bike. the cycle path, I try to avoid the roads as much as I can. But I love the um, roads, man. I'm such a dickhead on the road. It's though. so fun. It's just like I can go anywhere. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? I can go here. I can go there. I don't have yeah. to stop at the lights. I should, but I, I, but I, I might not. Know. You I know, don't, I don't ever stop. At, well, and sometimes I do. There's no comeuppance. You know, uh, it's, it's it's good. Uh, I feel that in a car as well when I'm driving. Yeah, you go through the lights, bro. Yeah. No, no, I don't do that. <laughs> but I do take the opportunity. Um, Enjoy a grape. I'll take a grape. I do take I do take the opportunity to um, to shout at people. Uh, I'm Oi. very I get very angry when I'm driving because um, how often do you get to really shout at people without any like um, consequences? Mm. You know. Well, it depends, man. If you had stopped. That, and you shout at someone, like we all could say, jump out their car and they can just like no, beat I mean, you up in it. Not like shouting out the window at people, mm. I'm not hurling insults at oh, in your own car. By. Like road rage with other pe- other <laughs> road users who haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> just an opportunity to to let some steam off. Yeah, I, I always do that. I'm always like cycling on my bike and like something happened about, oh, you fucking dick. Mm. Like that, like you bellend and then just kind of keep it moving, man. I love it. A bit road rage is healthy. I feel like it's good to kind of like, that's it's one good, of the benefits of like driving. Like even though it's expensive, but like you get to like at least disperse all those negative energies that are harboring and then just mm. get your anger out, I guess, even if it is not as positive. No, oh, for sure. Way. At least it comes out. Bear out then and I say. Yeah. Um, Something I, I wanted to talk about, um, which came up when we were filming an interview. We we filmed an interview with someone else recently. Um, and I know this is something that you've um, got an interest in. I know what, exactly <laughs> what you're going to ask me now. <laughs> exactly what it is. Um, oh. So, yeah, what's your thoughts on semen <laughs> retention? <laughs> I fucking knew it. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you must get an urge to splurge. Yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, I do, I do. Um, it's good. I feel like it is. It's like waves, man. I feel like you have periods of like semen retention. Keep them. Oh, sorry. Keep, yeah, so I. Right. Yeah, sorry. Let me <laughs> let me be clear about semen retention. Yeah, we need to capture. Them. Yeah, this is this is <laughs> this is the thumbnail moment right here. Um, I actually hate you, bro. I knew you were gonna ask that, man. You're such a dickhead. <laughs> like, yeah, my thoughts on semen retention. Yes, semen retention is great, but in waves, bro. I feel like if you just seem semen retention. Yeah. Semen repenting, <laughs> <laughs> semen expressing yeah. for uh, for like if you're retentive for like a long period of time, it can be a bit long, and it's not good for your testosterone. But I feel like um, if you do it in like waves, for example, if you went like two weeks not doing it, and then you came back, and then kind of did it yeah. within like sort of because um, it is good because it does help you think clearer at points. Not even like a and it does help desexualize your mind, which is actually really good. Mm. I think a lot of men are, because especially in Western culture, everything is so sexualized. You just walk down the street and you just see like very sexualized advertisements and billboards of products and like the body standards, very sexualized stuff, right? Even in like kids stuff and like, it's just everywhere. It's just very Westernized, basically. All the little innuendos they put in film, Disney films, we mm. were too young to understand them. Yeah. It's very, very sexualized, right? But um. But I feel like, it, in a way, it's very good because it helps desexual mind is very good because you think clearly and you think more honestly and you you you, you think from a more of a more of a centered place as opposed to thinking from your thoughts because you're not your thoughts. I say thinking from your thoughts, but obviously that makes no sense. But but one thing I realized, you are not your thoughts. Right. You're not your thoughts, and you're not who you think you are. Okay. You, like you are who you are, but you're not who you think you are. Like you. And when I say you're not who you think you are, like you have a perception of who you are. And you're completely, and I, my theory is you are just so wrong about that. Like you have to be, you have to just like not know yourself in order to know yourself. You just have to be like, you not let anyone tell you who you are in it. But I just feel like don't box yourself into like, oh, I'm this type of person, that type of person. Be prepared to be wrong about everything at any point in life is what I've realized in the last six months. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. And all that, all that from not nutting. Nutting, bruh. That's, that's great. Mm. Uh, I might have to try it. Uh, I did it. I did it last year for a bit, um, but I like that, did, that did feel. I did feel kind of cleaner. You do. I feel it. That's it as well as and as well as that. Like, like porn's bad for you as well, man. I like. I, oh yeah. Like, gotta stay away from that shit, guys. Like, um, 
you got to stay away from that shit. It just creates a negative perception of sex and as well as uh, it just like, reinforces negative stereotypes about women, sex, and it's just not very healthy mindsets to have. And it sexually blocks you as well, basically, as well, mm -hmm. is what you'll find is because I've not been addicted to porn ever, thankfully. I've always, no, I've just never really watched it, to be honest, man. I've just been like, okay, might as well just do it from imagination, bro. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> You've got it. a strong mind. I'm very strong will, bro. You know what I mean? Do yeah, you, like to, you like to wake up early, right? Yeah. How, wh why does that? Why do you do that? Sees the day in it. Yeah. Early bird gets to work. Mm. I always, bro, I, I wake up at like seven o'clock every morning without fail. Like my body clock just does that. Even if I, the only time will be exception because I used to work quite late at a nightclub. Like the only exception was that if I, I'd get home at like four and I'd wake up at 11. Mm. Like that was the only exception to that. But even then, in that period, I was like, I felt like a bum. Like, right. I just have to wake up early. Because even now, at the moment, I've got this routine. I wake up at, like, 6. I go to the gym for an hour. Then I go to the spa and the sauna for an hour. Then mm -hmm. I go to work. And I come back. And I felt, I found the way back. I'll go to the sauna and spa again. And, like, in between that, I'll do boxing. And I'll cycle from everywhere, man. So I cycle for about an hour a day as well. And I feel like waking up early just allows you to, like... Fit more in. Yeah, fit more in. But fulfill those basic fundamental needs of, like feeling healthy and being mm. and exercising and because exercise is really important to me man like oh yeah mm. for sure i've found um since i've been running a lot more yeah um if i don't run or if i don't exercise or swim uh i mean i do those three things cycle run swim if i don't do one of those for th two three four days i really find my mood is bad yeah. you know it yeah. really it clears your mind and it keeps mm. the thoughts fresh and it allows you to, yeah, cleanse yourself, I think. I think so, man. You've got to, like, a better out than an I say. You've got to sweat off mm. your uh, negative, or, like, your pent-up emotions, I guess. Mm. Whether that be positive or negative. For sure. Yeah, that's how I feel, man. Um, Then when it comes to rest, how do you rest? How does power seeds kick back? I go to bed at 10 o'clock every night. Yeah? Yeah, without fail. No, I'm joking without fail. About 10 or 11, around that time. I get about four, eight hours sleeping so I can wake up at seven. Mm. But honestly, I have my parents to thank for that, man. My parents were fucking strict when I was younger. Yeah? Yeah, they were like, on it. like Because I think I'm a very disciplined person. Mm. Like if I've got stuff to do the next day, right? Like I, I, I write lists. I plan my weeks out in advance. I write like lists of what I want to achieve and then I'll just tick off everything as I go along the day, right? And I feel like, what, my parents about that because they really instill discipline and integrity. Mm. And like, if I say I'm going to do something to anyone, I'm doing it. Like, this is why I don't, I try not to agree with to doing too much stuff. Because if I'm doing something, then I'm not going to flake on you. I will be there on that time, I told you. Yeah. Like, punctuality is a, punctuality is a big thing for me as well. Like, I hate lateness. <laughs> I can't talk, I can't, cannot fuck with He's always on time, man. Always, man. Like, I always be on time. If, if I am late, I'll always communicate it, like, mm. as, as early as I can. Or like I will try my best to just be on time or like, you know, because sometimes things out you control as traffic or whatever, man, and that's fair enough. But like, I think for me, man, I always aim to be, if you're not early, you're late. Mm, heavy. Be, yeah. I've been working on it. Um, yeah. I mean, since from when I was in school, I was late a lot. Was it? Yeah. I, I think I one year I got something like, I was late like 73 days of the year or something. Bro, I was never late in school. And I, I, my attendance for school was that for that year was like 100%. I didn't miss a day. <laughs> but you were late as hell. But on the on their attendance tracker, it, uh, my attendance was like 40% because of my I was late every so many of the days, mm. which is crazy. And since then I'm I'm like wait, much better, but mm. I have a tendency It's a to discipline. Be late. You have to practice it, man. For sure. I I've, just I've got sure. that avoidance like we said. I'm yeah. uh, I've got a big fucking stack of letters out there. You I'm, you I'm a big um, I avoid things. You are, man. Um, you don't want to confront it. It's fair enough though cuz it's like it's horrifying. <laughs> it's usually, it's, I mean, most of it's just un, un, unnecessary, irrelevant shit that I just need to put in a file. But it's this thing is, is that these things will end up owning you. Mm. If you hold on to it too long, it's like, right. Like, I am a sentimental person, right? Like, I, I, I appreciate the value of memories and the, I appreciate more the value of memories than opposed to actual physical objects sometimes, which people can, which sounds a bit like a bit mean and a bit cruel to say, but I feel like. Bro, but like, if you kept every possession you ever had, if you, from one years old, right, your house would be cluttered full of shit, right? Yeah. Like, you have to kind of just like get rid of. Sometimes you have to just kind of get get rid of the things that just don't serve you anymore. Yeah. Like, you just kind of have to like, like for me, like it sounds really bad, but like I had this monkey that like, okay, not the monkey. I, I had this pet, right? Not pet monkey. I had this like cuddly toy monkey, right? I've had since I was a child, right? Mm. 
And like, I was like, but I couldn't find anywhere to put it. And I was like, I don't want to keep it for the sake of like, just because, oh, it was my monkey when I was one and stuff, you know, but some, sometimes you just got passed off in it. But I ended up keeping the monkey in the end, but there was a whole nice. discussion in my head about, do I keep the bloody monkey or not? But, um, but I ended up keeping it because I couldn't get rid of that, man. But there are some things, but I feel like sometimes like you just have to, you have to let go. You have to be good at letting go, definitely, mm. in order to like progress mm. in life and feel like you're evolving. Because sure. a part of, a part of like evolving is detachment. You got detached from who you were as a person and just realized that the person you were yesterday is not the person you are today. Which is why I believe that like, you're not who you think you are. Like, mm. like you have, oh, I'm this type of person. No, you're not. Mm. You don't know who you are. Well, that's why I don't identify as a late person anymore. I used to. I'm like, oh, I'm always late. I'm a late guy. Mm. And then um, I saw somewhere like, oh, just stop think stop saying that and you won't be late as much yeah and literally like almost overnight like i was late 70 <laughs> percent less of the yeah. time you know yeah so i just oh i'm actually i'm not a late person i'm an on-time person and i started it, being yeah, on time because you speak it into existence in a way man exactly like i'll be honest this sounds so deep man but i thought i was like a very unlovable person right because i had quite low self-esteem self-esteem about myself right i had body i had quite a lot of body dysmorphia when i was a lot younger mm. i've not really ever spoken about really but like i had a lot and um i used to constantly like say it like i look ugly and this and that kind of stuff really and then um and then i stopped saying it and then i started taking more ownership when i stopped saying it it just meant then i started to take more ownership over my own body and my own personal style like getting tattoos which is like such a big thing mm. for me because i feel like that's me like claiming my own body back in a way which I felt like was something that, you know, it sounds really weird to say this as a man, but I felt like at a point when my body dysmorphia got to the point where it was just like, well, I, I literally don't deserve the skin I'm in. Wow. Like, you know, like I didn't deserve that shit. And I've now like me getting tats and like, you know, dressing how I dress. Like, I felt like it's me like reclaiming my own identity and my sense of self really, which is really important to mm. me, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Would you get your nipple pierced? No. I have quite weird nipples, bro. Yeah? Yeah. You've seen them, they're quite weird. I've never noticed them to be weird. You oh, don't nice. have to show us, but... um, <coughs> Nice. Yeah, bro. Yeah, it'd be a bit strange for me. It'd be with sensation, but... I get my ears pierced a bit more, but not my nips, man. Weirdly... Um, I get my clip pierced. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Weirdly, me and uh, my one of my cousins have got very similar nipples. Um, oh. You know, the same sort of size. But then my other cousin, his older brother, has got tiny nipples really so I, w I wonder if it's like a genetic thing or if it's like nurture nature when it comes to nipples zebra zebra yeah i don't know it's, it's, it's interesting Take your poison mate, i guess really who knows nipples you should like make this like the headline for the podcast in it like nipple talk <laughs> and nipples nurture or nature that's the big <laughs> question right that's what people want to see man you get me um so the next thing i was going to talk about was um I'm good for grapes, actually. I'm good for grapes. Was um, your music, bring it back to the music. Ooh, yes, of course. Because that is who you are. Yeah. You're a music man. It is. Um, what's coming? What's coming? Um, I should know this really, but I've got more singles on the way. Mm. I've got a manager now, which is really good. He, me and him are trying to get locked in and just create some more exciting things to happen really i've got some like songs with some good features on the way uh my next single's got uh Scylla on it actually so yeah know, which is really exciting like so i've not really done features before and i've not really had features on any of my release stuff mm. so me and Scylla have got a song together that i'm releasing as my own um that's coming out hopefully start of september if i get the video right because i'm gonna shoot a music video for it as well now i'm back in bristol properly uh just a few more singles man and then and then after that, bro, I think I've got a few more singles in, like what my power receives sound is right now. Then I think after that, bro, I'm just gonna do loads of different things. Change it up. Yeah, I'm just gonna like experiment and just try different sounds and just see what works better, I think, man. Because mm. I think I've got hit a bit of a, a Roblox. Roblox. <laughs> I think life is Roblox. No, I've hit like a bit of a point now where I'm like, well, I've done what I've done and mm. I'm known for it because I feel like people tell me that I've got a sound that no one else really has, which is really nice and stuff. But I feel like, do you, think that, do you think that keeps you in a prison almost? Yeah, it does. It does. Mm. A little bit. But it's nice to be known for something. Mm. And it makes it a lot easier to build your brand. Right. Because obviously you have to approach from a business mindset. You want to be established for a sound. And I'm so happy that the sound that I'm established is unique. Like I feel like if people want that particular vibe, then they go to me for it. Yeah. 
because only I can deliver it, you know what I'm saying, which is really nice. But I feel like fundamentally as an artist, man, I just feel like I can't be making this type of music until I'm like, what, 30? Like there's so many, there's so, so many so combination of free notes on the guitar <laughs> and so many breaks one could use before it just gets like. I guess it's also tr it's tricky t for bookings as well because yeah. every time that I I'm Paris's DJ um, yeah. when 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 we do a show, we're always like the weirdest, most like yeah. unique thing. Nothing else is like us, <laughs> and it's like you don't get booked for like a drum and bass club night because you're not quite that vibe. Yeah. And you, you quite often get booked for like um like a rap night. Yeah. But then I'm not really rap. you're not really rap either. No. And there's not enough people like you. And you're not quite... Cause you, we did a punk night once, do you remember? And everyone else was playing bands mm. as a band. And that was kind of weird as well. That was so weird. So like you're, you're in your own area. It's weird, man. But it is, it's, fu it's fun because I feel like you can just do... like there so no You take people by surprise a lot more. And you stand well, I, out. You're memorable, yeah. more memorable than just another rapper or another band. You know, I think so. Like, I love performing. That like, performing is one of my favorite parts about. Is my favorite part about making music. So it is a bit. Uh, it makes me sad that. Oh man, I wish I was getting booked more. But, but no, I guess it's sort of like I've got something very new. Obviously, new to people. People just don't quite understand it yet. And my job as an artist is to just kind of um, distill the formula, and make it more cum so it makes more sense to people. And that's just obviously mm. maturing as an artist and being better. Which is hence why I say I like being older. Or like getting older, you just find your sound a bit more, and you just figure out more what works, and you just have that knowledge and that confidence in what you know, and it's great. And you you make more money as well, which is always mm. helpful as well. And that's what you get from age, bro. Like so, um, but yeah, it's all, I've always had the issue as well. Like I'm not at all resentful for it though. Like mm. I think I'm my music exists in a very weird sphere within the southwest, and just even maybe in just music general, because because I'm 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 too punk for the rap. Yeah, but I'm too rap for punk basically as well in a way. But then it also the drum and bass influence as well. It's like well, I'm I'm too punk for drum and bass, and then I'm too drum and bass bass for punk. Mm. So it's just kind of okay. Well, where does this exist then? But then again, but people do you get gotta it. carve your own path though. That's what I'm doing, bro. You know what I mean? Like, people I'm, will follow you soon. There'll be nights based on your sound. Yeah, I think so, bro. One day that would be that would be crazy, man. But like, yeah, I think just gotta keep working at it, man. As long as I don't give up, as long mm. as I show up every day, yeah. I'll be fine. Mm. Uh, that's my favorite thing is to say to myself is that as long as, bro, no matter how uphill the battle music seems, right, as long as I don't give up, mm. I'll be okay. I gave up in music. I quit music. I feel like you just found your lane, bro. True. I, I feel like you didn't give up. You just evolved and you just kind of got with who you, you, you found out more of who you were in a way. But I gave up the the original dream, which was, which was Yeah, but you know what my, you know what my original dream was though? M movies yeah yeah i think i mean but we we do evolve you're right yeah we evolve i didn't say i wouldn't ever say i gave that up i just felt like i just um it just changed mm. that's what i mean it's just I, part of being older and getting off you just find yourself a little when you you become confident in your lane you know i remember i said i would never have a podcast too i was like i hate podcasts. joe vanek is a liar i'm a liar i am a liar it's a fraud to me no i'm not um are you watching anything do you watch do you watch things i w finished watching the boys the boys. Have you seen it? No, I've heard this good. Bro, thing. it's so good. Explain it to me without oh, spoiling it's it. It's just like the whole premise of it is like superheroes, right? Yeah. But they're all awful people, and these like these this team of people, the boys, right? They're trying to expose them and just like get them arrested and make them face justice for all the horrible things they do because they're very they exploit their powers in like very horrible ways and mm -hmm. not very superheroly, basically. And it's really interesting. It's actually like a it's a very like, it's a very, very potent at the moment with like what's happening with America as well. Actually, it's very like, this. It's a very it's set in a very dystopian reality, right? Obviously, but that dystopian reality feels somewhat eerily reminiscent of what Western times are actually living in at the moment. To be fair, like politics, it's a lot of political themes in those in the, that series. So it's really, mm. really good, and it's actually kind of scary how much like it art imitates life in a way and I feel like The Boys is just does a really good job of blending it and I just finished watching the new season man it was yeah good really good I've, I'll, I'll add it to the list it's on Prime I'm uh, I'm watching something called uh, yeah, Three on. Body Problem Ooh. it's uh, so on ne I saw it on Netflix and I don't usually watch things on Netflix it's kind of the thing I, I look at it and go ah oh, there's fuck all on here I'm gonna watch oh did you hear that nice <laughs> first fart on the podcast um 
<laughs> and w- I saw it. I was like, oh, this actually looks kind of good for a change. Yeah. But it's a, basically, uh, I, I, I kind of won't spoil any say anything um, apart from it's kind of aliens. Oh yeah. Um, so, what are your thoughts on aliens? Aliens. They're right. Yeah. They're cool. They're just doing their thing, innit? Will there be a Paris Eve's alien phase? <laughs> that would be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, like an astronaut phase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've literally had, what phases have I had, man? I've had like the. What phase? You've uh, had the, the topless phase. That's still ongoing, though. That's like a, that's like a side phase. But you were more topless. I was more topless. I think you were more topless for a, for a time. Yeah. When you first became power Thieves, you were always fucking topless. Yeah, but I was like, yeah, fuck it's yeah. It's like rejection therapy, you know? Yeah, I was like, who wants it? Who wants it? Nah, mm. man, that was... I don't know. I, I just felt like it gets hot when I stop performing. So I just mm. kind of take my top off, really, in it. And as well as that, in some of the photos, my top just happens to be off. And there just happens to be a camera there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, your camera that you've <laughs> given to the front Yo, member. Yo, take a audience. picture. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm a sucker for a photo, bro. Anyone that knows me knows that, man. But, um, but yeah... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what phase? I've, I mean, I'm in my cowboy phase technically at the moment. Yeah. Even though I'm not dressed very cowboyish, but I guess you're in your wolf phase before. Well, punk wolf phase, wolf phase. I feel like the wolf phases will never die, though. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. my nefarious phase, dialed in phase, sex tape, sex tape phase, which is like you know, arguable. That's still happening as well. That's on the way as well. So, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just very like at the moment, bro. Like I can't even make any promises about what's coming up, bro. Like you haven't had a blonde phase yet. Technically, I did. Yeah. Yeah, I dyed the back of it the back. And the oh, front yeah, of it. that's true. And the sides of it. I was like, the sides, it was such a weird thing back. I don't know why I did it, man. But I dyed the, my rat tail fucking blonde, dyed the fringe blonde, and I dyed the fucking sides of my head blonde. It was so mm. weird. That was in the green and black video. What about the motorbike phase? Yeah, that's coming. That's like when I get money, though. Yeah, But you used to ride bikes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to ride bikes. Like yeah. motocross. Yeah. When I was like younger, though, with my dad. Because he, he used it. I come from like a biking family, that's the thing. Like, they're um they're massively into my bikes, my family. Well, they were, but um, but yeah, my dad's kind of stepped away from it a little bit more now. But like, I'm thinking, as soon as I get my money up and I can afford it, and get like a garage or whatever, and just a good place to park my bikes, I want to definitely get bikes again, man. Like, mm. I just like racing bikes, man. I used to, I used to travel like on bike on the road. It used to be like you know, and I've got a bike test. I've still passed my bike test as well, so I could still legally ride bikes if I wanted to. But I just yeah, I haven't got a bike yet, so. If anyone has a bike and wants to give it to me, then <laughs> please do, bro. Um, you're racing bikes. That's quite, What's it like to race a bike, like a, a motorbike? Oh, this was a long time ago, though, bro. Yes, but still, you were a child, so yeah, that's even more insane. T- yeah, it was a long time ago, bro. And like, I, it was only a few times, man. But like, yeah, it was fun. Like, I was really brave. Yeah, I mean, I used to race BMX, though. Like, really? Yeah, I used to be really good at it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I stopped it, and then I did army cadets for like four years, and I did boxing. Mm after that so i did i've done all sorts of little side missions side quests i guess man but i used to love racing bmx so i was okay at it well i say i was really good i was like, mm. i was like okay i guess for my age anyway but i won a few trophies which was good but yeah, i did that for like a long time actually because my, my family you know, they love that kind of thing and i just got me into it i guess yeah, mm. yeah. i skated for a while when i was oh like, yeah maybe like nine to twelve and then Ooh. Maybe a bit, bit maybe a bit later, a bit more casually, but mm. then yeah, I kind of stopped that because um, I was I got you know you get to a point with skating, probably the same with BMXing yeah. as well, where you need to um, you need to release the fear of getting hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you cross that line, you're gonna be really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't, then you just can't progress anymore. Yeah, that's the thing. I didn't really. I kind of got to that point with BMX, but. But I kind of quit whilst I was getting there. Because I think that's like an age thing as well, definitely. But um, mm. yeah, we, how a different life would have been if I would have stuck at it. But then again, I'm grateful to be <laughs> where I'm at right now. So yeah, man, definitely. I feel like I'm more of a creative person. I am like a, as much as I love my sports and my fitness and I love to like get back into BMX, I feel like creativity is what sets my soul on fire the most. Like it, you know, like when I think about making music and I think about music, like there was like a fire and like a intense passion that comes with it that you just feel in your fucking soul almost. Mm. And that's what I know. That's my calling at the moment. And that may change. But as it was filmed before, now it's music. Could be pottery next, you know, who knows? Pottery. Yeah, who knows, man? Like I just kind of go with how I feel, man. I just march to be at my own drum. I feel like the human experience is not is not linear, bro. We're not meant to just do one thing for the rest of our lives. We're supposed to experiment. We're just supposed to try a plethora of things and we're supposed to like 
change up our identity every so often when it no longer suits us and no mm. longer speaks to who we are man nothing worse than pigeonholing yourself as to be one person or like one mm. type of artist for the rest of your life right just because it's what people know you from because it's profitable because this is what makes us fundamentally human i think I think what it is is because the whole capitalistic edge that's kind of fueled into it a way where you have to build up a brand for your music or your art in a way and people know you for it. So if you switch it up, you'll lose your money up basically. Tens of thousands of years ago, that didn't exist. People were just vibing. Yeah, people were just creating. People were just surviving. People were just surviving out here and then they just pick, then they just discover music and they just create art and they just do cave stone drawings and stuff. We used to hunt mammoths. Crazy. Can you imagine that? Like I would. There's a. In, I grew up in Cardiff and in the university. And we saw mammoths in, in Cardiff. In the, yeah, we did. It's a crazy in Wales. No, in the museum, there's a uh, animatronic mammoth, and it's like. Fuck me, man. It's, I'm sure there's a sign by it. It says this is this is. It's like pretty big, you know. Yeah, but it's like this is not quite as big as they actually were. And it, you're there like a child. Like how the how the fuck did we used to kill these things? And people used to say we were less advanced then. But yeah. I think we're we're a different kind of advanced now. You know. I feel like in a way we've. We've gone forwards to go backwards in a way because I feel like what's happened as because I think people need to remember as well is that we are not the apex. We we are not going to be the apex of human evolution. Like just because it feels like because we're in the present moment, people forget that humans have got so much more headway to evolve in. Yeah, for sure. Like people forget like just because like we've made so much technological advancements in the last hundred years and stuff and we've been around for like 20,000 years or however long we've been around for, right? We just tend to think that we are like the prime of humanity. Mm. When we're actually really not, we're probably very far off what the prime is going to look like. Like how many more social and political aspects of us are going to evolve? Like slavery was still a thing 400 years ago. Mm. Now, obviously we talk about or how bad it was but the general consensus back then was it was a good thing so, yeah. you know, and it was okay it was somewhat acceptable to do this mm. and now obviously now it's bad like these things like that that are like starting to evolve and a hundred years ago women didn't have to vote for example as well mm, like yeah. things just evolve and I feel like humanity will be in a better place in hundreds of years time than it was now like we evolve and evolution is always a good thing we'll just get better at stuff really and discriminate against this uh, yeah. groups of people and marginalise them I guess which is always positive as well I guess but um but yeah, like, um, but yeah, we're not the prime of humanity, bruv. Like, no. We're not, no. We're definitely not far off of it, I, I believe anyway. But, you know, it's still good to be alive though, I guess. Hmm. Have you, do you feel like you've um, been discriminated? No. No? Against what? Anything. I mean, you just get bullied a lot, but like, I guess that was just like part of being, but, but the thing is, it's like I, yeah, I used to get bullied a lot. I mean, I went to like a very traditional, like a school, like a, like a jock school in a way is what they say in it like rugby boys not, yeah, yeah. not like rugby boys in it but like it was like the boys uh, ish but lads like, lads but i was like one of the only crew, like i made youtube videos in school and i was like one of the only people that did it mm. so they kind of knew me as like the youtube kid in the way or like the library kid you were an easy target yeah in a way and as well as that i obviously have a very big mouth in it so <laughs> I, like, I speak how i feel in it and i don't really hold back and I feel like I just kind of rub I just very good at rubbing I am very good at rubbing people up the wrong way in it mm. like I've got a bit of a knack for that but you know it is what it is my friends and I think when you're younger and stuff and you're you're when you're surrounded by people who are also very young and developing their hormones and stuff you just get a lot of anger like I go into school sometimes I just get beaten up straight away like it was bad like wow. yeah, it was bad man but like, to say I'm discriminating against is I don't know if I'd go there man I just feel like I just had a very uh very normal experience but i'm not trying to discredit my experiences in it but i don't want to like i would hate to think i had a chip on my shoulder mm. about how life has quote unquote treated me treated mm. me because i feel very knowledge i feel very gifted in what i know and i'm able to share that with people i love and i care about mm. so i feel like i'm happy to have taken the brunt of my negative experience just so that i can share this and hopefully have a positive impact through my pe to people through my negative experiences so i don't ever look at it as like i was discriminating like oh, you know what i'm saying that's, that's a what, good attitude i think yeah so what is that like it's quite hard to discriminate me i'm fucking white in it <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you know the world, the world was built for like people like me i'm a white man in it so you know it's, it's true yeah so it's uh it's, it's time special time now on oh. the podcast <laughs> um fantastic one we've got oh. we've got some cakes here oh my god let me hold them so they don't fall uh, I'm not gonna no. I was. I'm not gonna do the n the nipple thing. But we've got some yummy cakes. <laughs> um, the nipple thing. Oh, the nipple cake. Yeah. The, the, I'm not gonna do it. Can I do it? Yeah, you can. Okay. Uh, these are baked by. Um, yeah. These are baked by our, our sponsor. That's not even a company. Yeah. Man. Um, 
It was in, in Soul Trader. Yeah, Soul Trader in That's Not For Sale, Sophie, oh. my lovely girlfriend who baked us a ca- some cakes. Oh, mate. Um, you know what? So let's let's t- tuck in. And it, God, this is decorated like stunningly. Mm. You know, I'm not actually, I'm only on natural sugars at the moment, but I'm going to break my... Uh, yeah, my little vow for this one. I think I'm only eating like that's why I'm eating grapes at the moment. Like grapes for this, like a natural sugars only. But for this, I fold. Hmm, that cream is banging, man. Hmm. Mm. Was the sponge baked as well? Yeah, all baked. It's good. Damn. Thank you to our sponsor. Yeah, shout out to them. Not a real sponsor. If you actually want to sponsor us, really, then please do. Um. um. Do you read? Do you read books? Yeah, I like to read sometimes, yeah. I read more PDF articles, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah, bro. Like, about what? Uh, mind control. <laughs> like, seriously, yeah. Mm. Um, The method of mind control, controlling your own mind. Oh, your own mind? Yeah, because, like I said, you're not, you're not your thoughts. What I mean by that is you're not your subconscious mind. Right. So mind con- this book I was reading at a point, right, was about um, controlling your own mind, basically, so you could have more positive affirmations. Mm. Because your mind enters your mind enters certain frequencies based on certain activities. So it's like, a, it's like it hurts your frequency rate, right? When you're sleeping, it's at a very low, relaxed rate. And then you can go even deeper that, which is what astral projecting and what is... Um, what dreaming is essentially astral projecting is when you can you know have you ever astral projected before i've not I ever been successful at it unfortunately but astral projecting for those who don't know is when you can um pro- you're in the dream state you can project your consciousness to do anything you can fly around and you can have free will because in your dreams you can't really control what happens no you're just more of like a man in a theater watching life happen basically and um i was reading this pdf well it was an actual book but i decided to just cheat it and download the pdf version of it and just read it nice and it's about controlling your subconscious mind because sometimes we can have very negative subconscious thoughts about yourself. And I was just reading this about how way to do it, how you can just program your subconscious mind to have more positive affirming and instill better habits, basically. And it was quite interesting. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, also, That's interesting. I read loads, I read loads of manga, like Death Note, Bleach. Yeah? Naruto. Yeah, man. Have you read, uh, we've got a Chainsaw Man here. So I say what? lots, but no, I haven't. Like, only like three or four. Well, I've I've never got into it. Um, it looks fun though. Yeah, it's good, mate. Pictures are lovely. Yeah, pretty good artwork. What do you say to people that that don't think it's um it's true art or it's real? What is true art then? Hmm. What is true art? It's a very good question. Fuck I don't know if we're well, if it ain't that, ain't nothing then. That's true. I, I mean, think. some people just think it's kind of rubbish. Yeah, but it's just like, bro, what do you know? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to you. Like, fuck you. I'm reading. Um, I'm reading Game of Thrones. Oh, moment. really? I just started that. It's quite yeah. good. Um, yeah. And yeah, I've never been a fantasy guy. Really, I've, I love um, fantasy. Like I have fantasies, but I've never been a fantasy guy. Uh, and I've never seen Lord of the Rings either. Yeah. I know you like that, right? That's right. It's all right. I mean, I only watched the first. Bro, I've started. It tw- I've started that movie like three times. I give up after about twenty minutes. What? It's so boring. Yeah, but I feel like it's like Star Wars. You kind of have to grow up liking it. Like I feel like yeah, if sure. you're like in your twenties and you're trying to get into Star Wars, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Like you either like you either have liked Star Wars your whole life or you just don't like Star Wars. Your parents yeah. like Star Wars probably. Yeah, and you, you don't get into you just you don't get into Star Wars mm. at a later like a later point in life. You're always no like, I feel like Lord of the Rings is like the same sort of thing. Because I tried what I watched two of the films last year, yeah. The first two well, there's three of them, but the two of them. And my my brother's mate recommended I fucking watch the four hour extended versions of these films, mm. and it was the stupidest shit I've ever done. It was so dumb. I don't know why I listened to him, man. Which is why you should absolutely listen to absolutely no one. I'm joking. Don't, but don't. Isn't one? What's the the first one's called? Uh, just Lord of the Rings, right? And then, Fellowship of the Ring. And then it's like Twin Towers or something. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Twin. Something about the twin something, and then it's obviously like Return of the King's the last one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the first, I actually quite like the first one, actually. Second one, I couldn't tell you what happened. Mm. And the third one, I know that that's where it all gets wrapped up. But I like Harry Potter more. Oh, yeah? I love Harry Potter, bro. I feel like people are either kind of Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, or maybe like Mean Girls or something. <laughs> mean Girls. <laughs> Gossip Girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <is there> any... <laughs> Have you seen Mean Girls? Mean Girls is great, man. No, I remember watching, it. that was kind of a significant moment in my young life. Oh, really? I think it was maybe year seven or eight. When I had a friend um, uh, at the time, um, and yeah, he took me around to his house, and we we wa- he showed me Mean Girls and uh, and Bratz as well, 
um, I think he might have been gay, and which is great. Oh, um, brilliant! And I was like, it was, a, it was a good education, you know. He was like, yeah. I love these movies. I don't, think he, I don't think he realized at the time either. Uh, <laughs> and he showed me these great movies, and I'm like, I'm, I love that, and I've always been grateful for that because um, kind of changed my changed my outlook, you know. I, be, I, be, I was raised by a woman anyway, so. Uh. You know, I, once I got that, I was like, I, I understand it even more now. Yeah, bro. I've not even seen much of the Bratz stuff, really. But, um, but yeah, I need to. I need to watch Bratz. Where do I start in the Bratz cinema universe? I think, universe? I don't know. I think there's only, like, one. What it's movie? A, I think there's a lot of Bratz, like, the animated stuff. Yeah. But I think there's, like, yeah. a Bratz live action. <laughs> there's a Bratz live action. Man, you know what live action film was great? The Scooby-Doo live action film. Oh, like, my God. The that, when they dressed up, that was so funny, bro. man. Man. And all the weed references throughout the movie that you obviously right. don't get. Yeah, you don't get when you're it's a like, kid. Mary yeah. Jane, oh man, I love that <laughs> name, Scoop. Bro, Daphne was a baddie, man. Oh, yeah. She was my first crush, dude. Really? Yeah, yeah. She's a baddie, ask anyone, man. man. Ask anyone, she's and they'll tell you that. Baddie. Daphne, animated Daphne. Yeah. She was my first crush. I think was my first crush was. I don't know. She was so, she was so attractive to me i don't know what it was i think because they made her attractive probably yeah. is why i found her attractive but yeah but daphne's a buddy anyway even in the car it's like oh daff but then uh, i mean in the world in the modern you know world of the internet i feel like velma gets more love i've seen more oh like, velma I've... i don't mean daphne i meant velma really yeah sorry yeah velma see, bro. Vel velma gets more love i don't mean there. daphne i meant velma the whole okay, time okay so velma... these are another two type of people there's a velma and daphne yeah velma's a baddie bro yeah. daphne's okay uh, no, daphne's, when I was... daphne's hot but like you know daphne's more like conventionally attractive i feel yeah. like as we've grown up people have gone Do hang you know, on alternative bro yeah oh shit yeah. well we like alternative baddies bro <laughs> that's true goth baddies you know what i mean maybe maybe velma's just easier to cosplay i don't know maybe bro you have a thing about cosplay though do I? Well, you went to anime, anime con. Yeah, that wasn't like a sexual thing. No, I didn't say that. I didn't. That was like you have like a you like a cosplay or right, like. Right, right. I didn't mean it was like a sexual thing, bro. I meant just. Like, sorry. I meant like you liked it or like. Yeah, no, I enjoyed that. You yeah. dibbled and dabbled in it a little bit. I, w I haven't dressed up though. I would okay. dress up. I think I would dress up. I dress up. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Who would you be? Who would I be? I probably like. I want to be Anakin Skywalker. Oh yeah, that it would have to be. Yeah, I think you so. kind of are Anakin. I was watching um, the really? th second and third. I watched the first three movies last year, and the second, and especially the third movie. I was like, this is literally fucking power sleeps, man. <laughs> and I, I'll be honest though, the acting's fucking shit in the second <laughs> movie. is so bad, I can't believe it. And the third movie's actually good, but the acting is terrible, man. <laughs> Who let this happen, General you know? Grievous? You're shorter than I expected. <laughs> tenth level, tenth level, thousands of battle droids. Uh, and the, the in the second film, the scene when they're at the uh, they're basically at Lake Como in Italy. I don't like sand, and it, it's coarse and rough. And he's just like tries to kiss her, and she's like, no. And then he's like, <laughs> but I'm in love with you. And then she just falls in love with him immediately. And then Bro, that's how get married. That's how me and baby girl want to be dialed in it. Like that's how I want to try to be with baby girl in it. You know, so yeah. just locked in, just locked in, just straight like. Bro, Lake Coma, Italy, just like talking about sand and like holding hands and edging each other, like <laughs> that's destroying the, the universe, destroying together. the universe, becoming an evil, dark, malevolent beast in the in a fictional universe, and just killing your own wife and chopping off your son's own hand, like and becoming like part cyborg. Yeah, mate, what's not there to like about that? Becoming hideously disfigured Deformed, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the thing like, plastic but that's my i actually have a phobia i don't know there's probably a name for this but i have a phobia of having one of my limbs amputated Ooh. like a morbid phobia like it actually keeps me up like of losing a limb like, i feel like if i lost a limb i'd probably just kill myself in it wow I swear down like yeah so fucking god forbid that ever happens bro touch so much wood right now bro um so paralympics is starting next week <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah have you been following any of the actual Olympics? I've been following the Instagram page for it. Oh, it's good. It's it's, it's pure brain rot. What do you think about that? Actually, I've seen quite a lot of discourse online about that. Some people, um, some people think that it's it's great and it's bringing attention to to the Paralympics, but um, some people argue it's not so good because the Olympic page itself isn't the same vibe. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think it's a bit exploitative a little bit. Mm. I think it's kind of like, well, yeah, fair. These people put themselves out there. They're going to be judged on the world stage, but to be then judged by the same like person. Who's, by the like, actual by governing the actual body. People, yeah. yeah, to be like made a mockery out of in a way and that you laugh at people's expense is just a bit like, 
okay like because mm. had it been like a meme page or something like that people would be like oh that's just dark edgy humor mm-hmm. but the fact is like the olympics doing it is sort of like it's a bit twisted yeah a little bit it's just a bit dystopian but then again who are we to say maybe the paralympics Paralym- paralympians think it's fucking hilarious <laughs> You know, they might be dialed into like this humor. Yeah, they might love this shit, man. But I, I mean, I saw, it one, I saw it one time and I was just like, I looked at the page. I was like, really? I was like, fair enough, I guess. Like, mm. but I don't know. I, I personally, if I ran the, I wouldn't do that. It's just out of respect. Even then, I just feel like, well, who, like, yeah, you kind of have to be a bit twisted to like make memes like that in out of other people, low key. But I just feel like for me, like, I'm like, nah, not really my kind of vibe, I guess. Like, I wouldn't really knock someone else down like that i guess mm. it was at a disadvantage to me anyway in life because of a disability and then to like take the piss out of him was just a bit like a bit disrespectful my opinion so yeah for sure yeah bro that's how i feel you've gone viral right yeah i'd have jeez bro yeah that was a few years back now yeah i went viral literally just up the road in asda with ivan and uh gaia he was singing in asda or bro something. and this other guy called lee bro like lee was yeah. that the guy singing? So he sang yeah. opera, right? Yeah, he did. In oh, Asda. Oh, 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 yeah. was, how was that? What's it feel like? I've never gone viral. Oh, it's weird, bro. Like, it, it you know what? It was... <laughs> People just, for some reason, like, I, there was like a... <laughs> like, people would like message me because obviously people know me like I can make music. So when I went viral, people like thought I'd like made it in life. <laughs> people just thought like, oh, congrats, bro. Like you've gone clear. Yeah. Like so good that music's paid off. It's like, mate, I've gone viral for something that has nothing to do with my fucking music. I didn't do this. Like, I didn't. And this had literally like fuck all to do with me. <laughs> I just posted this video in it and it just went fucking crazy and had no correlation. But people just assumed that my music would just take off and like people would just like see this video and be like hang on he looks like he makes music in that video let's check it out no way this is amazing yeah no bro that's not how it works unfortunately not. like you gotta be that's the thing like i'm quite even with my actual stuff right now like i don't really try to like i try to just keep it to the music mm. like i understand like obviously being an influencer but I don't want to build my brand upon like being an influencer, or being known as like someone with a voice and being known as like, uh, I don't know, like an influencer. I don't really want to be known for that or like a funny guy. I don't really know that's the funny guy in it. Mm. Like I kind of want to be known for my art. Mm. And like, and obviously I'm okay with just being an, an artist in my opinion. Like obviously I'm funny and I, I like to talk and I, I'm, I've i got a lot of charisma and like I'm, you know, I'm, I've got, I can present you know, I've got a lot of boxes ticked out. I could probably be good at TikTok if I wanted to. Yeah. But it's just not who I am. It's just not, well, not who I am right now. Mm. It's not what calls to me. Maybe in the future I will decide, ah, oh, fuck this musician, I'm becoming a TikTok influencer. Mm. I don't know. Like, it may happen. But like, I think for me right now, yeah, I want to just keep it to the art. And I'm just very, not like very controlling over what I post. Cause sometimes I post absolute fucking shit, man. But I, I don't want to like be known as like, oh, this is what, oh, you're the funny guy on the internet. When it's like, nah, bro, I just kind of want to be known for my music in it. And like my art, why I, why I actually want to share with the world. But, you know, but I don't get choose. I don't get to choose how to be remembered, though. So nobody does. We don't get fair. to choose our own legacies, unfortunately. Do you but, know what? Do you know what I hate? Do you know what really grinds my gears on TikTok? Go on, bro. Those people, those goddamn people oh. whose entire content is like they, they'll steal someone else's video mm. and you'll be watching it and then you'll see their like tiny face in yeah. the corner. And then once they'll pause it and go, my God this guy and then they'll play the rest of the video and that's their only contribution and they are like getting more views do you know why, actual, why, why it gets, that, do you know why it gets more views why? it's more stimulating visually because you're not only watching one video you're watching two videos you're mm. watching one guy watching the video yeah it's like where people put like subway surfers under like, I, I, can't, I, I won't lie I do quite like that yeah exactly that's <laughs> literally why they do it is because it's like just this. Mm, like, watching it just brain rotting away yeah <laughs> 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 that's why people do it man it's just more that's why it works because it's just more stimulating it's but more they, ha- they must have no shame to do that yeah to steal just, content yeah and then add nothing really to it of any value yeah of right. any real value that's just the game man it's i don't I think it's, it's not it's not who does it first it's just how it's done bro people are hungry though i, I yeah. respect the grind you know like yeah. oh i've got no real talent so i'm gonna steal other people's content and then yeah but i also laugh believe talent doesn't it. exist in a way no no I'm not talented. I don't believe I'm talented. I just believe I just do things, man. And I just, just locked in. 
I just do things, man. I'm not talented at all, bro. Like, <laughs> just look at me. I'm just fucking perfect, man. No, bro. I, I mean, yeah, I guess talent does exist, but I, I don't really care enough to comment. Mm. But I'm just not talented at all. I'm just a fucking born a genius, man. I feel like uh, being creative is a privilege. Yeah, it's not everyone gets to be creative. Not everyone does because they've got... It is a, a financial privilege as well. Is like you know, it's also a mindset thing largely as well. But I feel like everyone's born with the ability to be creative. Yeah, for sure. But like everyone's just been taught, or it's been institutionalized, or just distilled into them that you can't be, because it doesn't make them any. It doesn't make money, mm. which is literally like unfundamentally creative. It's making money and being creative does not go hand in hand in each other very well. Basically, mm. like you can make money, but and also be creative how you make your money. Basically, but you can't really. There's like a balance to be found between the both things before you start to compromise your quote unquote artistic integrity, yeah. but also your need to survive and create money and so to pay your expenses, basically. So yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. What a good way to end. I think. Um, we should wrap it up unless there's anything you you, you would need to add before before we uh, i have nothing to contribute great well this has been fun yes. um i've no idea this might be and i've been power receives. this has been fun and uh <laughs> we're very happy you tuned in guys thank you so uh, much yes cheers i hope this wasn't boring